Today we did maybe like the last new content. Um, tomorrow we have one more lesson of the unit and that's just comparing data sets, which really we've been comparing data sets almost this entire unit. So today was like the last new bit of information. And it was all about what standards are. Um, it's another measure of variability. So in really simple terms, what does standard deviation tell us? How is there out of the So if it says rankings in order of variability, like most variability states, that would be most spread out, the least spread out. Um, so there's that. What did I say standard deviation goes by this measure? Both of these are measures of variability. Both of them use the mean. So both of these are variability, but they get paired with the mean a lot. So then when do I use the mean over the median? When do I prefer the mean? Thing. When is it really easy to see the mean? When the data is symmetric. So this all kind of like goes back together. When the data is symmetric, the mean matches the median. Okay, I know that's weird. It's like, okay, well then why do we ever prefer the mean over the other? Um, it's more so like when it's not symmetric or when it's skewed, So not symmetric, not, not symmetric slash if it's skewed, what do we prefer, the mean or median? Mm -hmm. Median. And the reason why that is, is because any outliers pull the mean in that direction. So then the mean is like no longer reliable. So that's like why even bother to like separate it out. So when it's not symmetric, we use the median. And then what would we use for spread when we use the median? Pay attention. What do we use for median or spread? That coincides with median. I do. So it's like an analogy. The mean is to standard deviation to mad. Whereas the median is to IQR, like they just go together. Uh, median and IQR you use when it's not symmetric because of those outliers, making the mean unreliable, all that stuff. So that's the gist of the lesson today. A higher standard deviation would mean more spread out. So you can use technology to compute standard deviation in case you maybe forget that. But know that you can only see the data in a dot plot. Like on your test, there will be histograms and box plots. Although, yeah, you should be able to tell me whether or not a box plot is symmetric. So I'm drawing one right now. Is this symmetric? No, because if I draw a line down the middle, it's not a mirror image on each side. There's nowhere I could draw a line that it makes it a mirror image on each side. So you do have to like be able to compare standard deviation of box plots, which I think we'll see an example of in the lesson tomorrow. But more spread out, higher standard deviation. Less spread out, lower standard deviation. And then be able to relate it back to the real world. So if you want something that's like very consistent, whatever the situation is, maybe the standard deviation represents like number of points scored in a basketball game. If you want a player with like a smaller standard deviation, then that player is more consistent. If you want a player that just tends to score more overall, they might have a higher standard deviation if their data is more spread out. So, like, that's what we mean by saying relating it back to the situation. We'll see some of that on the practice.
So last I checked, the internet was working. It wasn't really working for my students last hour, so we had to be a little more creative. Um, either way, they were still responsible for it. So this is like your meeting 80% or higher. And both of these are only four questions each. So you know it's two separate practices. It's not like double the work, okay? But get 80% or higher on both. Ask them more intense if you're not meeting that. Um, questions, of course, I always check in for the end too to see what you want to see on the screen. Should you finish that early? Because like this is what we did last hour since um, the internet wasn't working. You do have those study guides available, and one of them is on paper. So one of them you don't need Wi-Fi. The other two are online. Should you get bored and want more to do to prepare for your unit one test? Another thing you could do is make sure your binder is ready. So that way you can do it. But this one is like the task for today. So if you need anything as you go, let me know. But otherwise, usually the last 20 minutes, I'll take her Yes. Study guides, which are all available now. Two of them are online only. The one that was on paper is this one that I'm like hovering around. Um, all are aligned closely to the test. So I never hide like what questions I will be asking you. So all I change are the numbers, pictures. I may not ask word for word exactly the same question, but it'll be the same skills. So definitely if you were reading it, I hope at the very least we all got to read it. If you didn't understand something like you can now to ask about it. The same as your test next week on Tuesday. And then also you can ask about any uh unit one assignment, really anything thus far. But the 12, 13 is what we did. So do you have any questions at all that you'd like to see me work out? Everyone is necessarily killing it, and now we were going to think they're all doing good here. So, here's just like a few things extra that you have to do. And of course, I think since we all did that in the loop a long time ago, that was what's keeping your grade really good in here. But anything at all that you're confused about, you do take our unit one test next week on Tuesday, you're not still and you have to be and what about it? Like, you know, what it is. Okay, so we did teach you how to do mean absolute deviation by hand. So, say that I'm okay, this is not asking you for the math, but let's just pretend, pretend it was. So, this is our data set. Uh, MAD stands for mean absolute deviation. So when you break down that word, you would have to know what the mean is, and you can use technology for that. You can use technology to find the MAD too, but so you would find the mean by hand by like adding up all the numbers and dividing by however many numbers there are. I'm just going to put it here. So hopefully you guys know how to use your technology. If you don't, this is how you make Desmos think. So it's like pick a letter equals bracket, type in your data, and use comments to separate it.
So I'm using this data, obviously, like on your practice test, it didn't ask for the math, but it said I had 19 members. So it should have 19, it should say 19 element lists. Like I should have 19 data points in that list. And if I want to find the mean, like really, I could just go here. You can also find the math here too. But I'll show you like, so you understand it better. Maybe you'll remember it better. Mad is right there. But mean is what you need to calculate the mad. So if I do mean of whatever I called my data set, it gives me the mean. Um, let's just round to 14. Okay, it doesn't specify which one. So let's just say our mean is 14. And if I want my mean absolute deviation, you need to basically list how far each data point deviates from the mean. So how far away is three from 14? 11, I'm just gonna kind of list it over here. Um, how far is four from the mean? And there was three fourths, so that's why I listed it three times. How far is eight from the mean? How far is eight from 14? Okay, and eight was there twice, so I'm putting the six twice. How far is 10 from the mean? Or 14. Okay, how far is 12 from 14? How far is 14 from 14? How far is 15 from 14? And there's two fifteen, so kind of listed twice. How far is sixteen from fourteen? And there's two sixteen, so I'm gonna list it twice. How far is seventeen from fourteen? And there's three of them, so I'm gonna list it three times. I'm gonna continue my list over here. Uh, how far is eighteen from fourteen? So that's a good thing to pick up on. When we say mean absolute deviation, we don't want you to say any negatives, if that makes sense. Like absolute means how far away from zero normally. So basically just no negatives. But right now we're doing it from the mean. So that's a good thing to pick up on. Um, 18 is four away from the mean still. So I'm gonna list the four. How far is 20 from the mean? Six, and how far is 40 from the mean? 26. Okay. So this is all my absolute deviations. I should have 19, just like I had original data points. I should have the same amount of absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation is you now taking the mean of this. Okay. So I'm going to use my technology still for that. And we're going to do it a little bit differently than how I did it before. I'm just going to do mean like this and list my numbers now. So these are all my absolute deviations that I'm taking the mean of. And if I'm using technology, I cannot combine any, otherwise it'll be like wrong answer. So you just, if there's two sixes, what's the two sixes? I think when they first showed this to you, and you would have had to watch it in a video, so it's on. But um, they like made you make a big table. You don't really need to. You can make a list. But you're figuring out how far each data point is from the mean, and then taking the mean of that. So this is the mean absolute deviation because I just took the mean of all my, well, and I guess I did it, I rounded the mean. So that will kind of affect it as well. But it should be near this from my original data set. So it'll probably be slightly off because I did round. But just to show you um, that, and then if I did my original data set, it is like pretty close 
because then it the only reason it's different is because I rounded it and do this long decimal to get four decimal set. But that's how you calculate. No problem. Any other questions? And what does Mav tell us about the data? All of you. What does Mav tell us about the data? What is MAD really similar to? Okay, so MAD and standard deviation tell us the same thing. I mean, their formulas are slightly different, which is why they give slightly different numbers. But what does stand, standard deviation tell us? How spread out something is. So MAD also tells us how spread out something is. So the MAD is telling me that this data on average is spread out about five, which it's not really true, like, but because we have this big gap of like 20 and 40, that brings the math up. Um, but if that 40 wasn't there, then my math would decrease by a lot. Um, but any other questions on any practice? Practice test. I'm checking the practice test, this one again on. Finder check day. I mean, I already wrote down how much you did um, when we first turned it in, but like I imagine you'll finish it. I think only a couple people finish the whole thing. And then I'll check it again, finder check day on Friday. So that way I could give you those points for completing the study guide. And hopefully you're asking questions or checking the key. I haven't posted the key yet, but do not. A couple people in here that just aren't getting much done, and I just don't know why. Like, I'm here to help you. Like, I'm literally right now offering to do some of your homework for you for this app. Like, there's no reason to get 